Hello YouTube, Kashif here from Kira Graphics, and I'm back with another video. And this one is going to be a quickie. And tonight, if you saw the saw the video posted yesterday, I briefly showed the um, the live Boolean tools being used. And with that being, and you know, it was pretty cool. I liked it. You know, I was I was so excited over the release of ZBrush 4.8, I couldn't help but show it to you. And this time, I'm gonna show you a little more. In this video, I'm gonna cover deformers. Okay, not just deformers. I want to cover something cool, and that is the new addition to ZBrush 4.8. You might have saw it in a video. You might have saw it yesterday in my video about the um the booleans, but today's video I want to cover the Gizmo. That's right. What a cool sounding name, huh? The Gizmo. I love how it sounds. It's a cool sounding name. So now I'm gonna show you how that Gizmo works. So I'm gonna draw something on the screen here. Hit my T key, and do, do, pay, pay no mind to my UI here. I am, um, I I, re, I got um, had to um fix my UI, so we get everything working again. So do that. I'm gonna go ahead now and create a little sphere 3D, make a poly mesh. So so could be, so edit it down a little bit. Okay. So let's begin about the gizmo. What's the what's the gizmo exactly? Well, the gizmo to me in ZBrush. Is the coolest thing since sliced bread. Okay, kind of. I've been wanting a gizmo for many years now since I've owned ZBrush, and in the past, we've always had the transpose line. So, let me show you how to get this gizmo. On the keyboard, if you know your shortcuts, if you use Maya or 3ds Max, hit W. So, basically, this is the gizmo. Hitting, hitting the W key opens it up for you. That's it. How cool is that? That is the gizmo, and I, and I can't, I, and I can't say, and I cannot tell you how overjoyed I was when I saw this came. This is coming to ZBrush 4.8. But of course, if you love, of course, if you like me and you have a soft spot for the transpose line, no problem. You can go over here to this little, to this little icon here, this little, little gizmo icon. Turn it off, and then, and then you can get the old-fashioned transpose line. But of course, I don't think I'll be using this line anymore. It's just for measurement, really. So let's turn the, let's turn the, let's turn the gizmo back on. I miss it already. So get the Y key. There you go. That gizmo. So the gizmo pretty much allows you to move any 3D object in 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 this in the space here. So let's move it around a little bit, right? Right, move it around. So if you hold here, the little any part, any any edge of the square, it it says move screen. Alt to unlock. I'll show you that in a minute. But you move this thing around here. Pretty cool, huh? I can now move the I can I can now move this around and put back where it was. I can also rotate. Look at that, that cool. And I can even scale up in Y, in X, and even in Z. And yes, you can move your model in any part of the viewport with the gizmo very easily. And a uniform scale, no problem. Just make the little box here, hold control, it'll inflate. Or you drag it out, and you'll see the little numbers on the bottom there as, as I drag the gizmo. How cool, that's, that's pretty freaking cool. I love how that is. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and let's go ahead now and explore some options with the gizmo. Let's say this little button here called sticky mode. I, I mean, also, of course. This line here, I don't know. I don't know what it does, but all I know is that when I move my model around, it'll stay stuck. It'll it'll basically it'll remain in the last position where it was before. And of course, I can click this button now and move my gizmo around. It'll still remain in the same space it was before. So, but wait, I want to put it back where it was. Not a problem. You can now go ahead and click. You hold the Alt button, and you see the lock. See that lock there that pops up. I'm holding the Alt key. And it lost the gizmo temporarily. You click on a vertex, bam, it'll jump right back where it was in in world in world space. And I can also hold the Alt key, move the gizmo back where I want it, and to do a set orientation, just hold the Alt key and hit the little this little arrow reset thing. Do a set orientation, boom. Now you, now you have your gizmo right where it was. Okay, and home. Set mesh to axis. Usually, I don't mess with that. 
which is pretty which is pretty nice. And I, th I think and I, and I think that button here, this little locator button here. But, yeah, okay, there we go. That's a fast way to turn the model back to the center center point. This button here, little little location GPS icon here, it will allow you to take the model back where it was. All right, enough about enough about the gizmo now. The gizmo is the coolest thing I've ever seen in ZBrush. I'm, ha I'm happy it's here. Oh, and the other option, little button here, is um this one we call transpose all subtools. So let's put let's put, let's put a few in here, some subtools. I'm gonna put in the uh, a cube. I'm gonna move that I'll move that around a little bit to the right. And I'm gonna pin another one. Let's pin um, something cool. Let's go to pin a a cone. Cones are awesome, right? I love cones. So so anyway, this little button here. It allows me to transpose all subtools I've selected. So if I hit this button here, it'll, it'll make a list of all the subtools that are going to be that are going to be moved. So if, if I move it now, all subtools move together. That's pretty. That's, that's pretty slick. I can move an entire arm with this, or something you know, might seem. But what if I want to move only only like the sphere or the box? Well, what I do is I, if I control if I think a, think a control, if I I think it's uh what is it? There we go. Shift control click. I only move the circle around. And, and kick it again. And then we'll move. So basically what's happening here is any any objects that are dashed lines are not selected. Only the only only these are moved. Which is great if you want to move to certain subtools or all the subtools in a group. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and delete these now. You know. Sorry guys. <laughs> Alright, so let's, put, let's sort of turn the um, our little thing back on. So now what's next? I want to show you. I want to sh now I want to show you the deformers. Oh, and by the way, there's a little gear here. This will allow you to pick any of primitives in your scene. So be forewarned, however, if you click on one of these, it will not append a tool. It will replace it will replace what's currently there. So set a spear, which is all nice and everything, but spears are boring. Let's try something. Let's go something cooler. Let's go. Let's go for a ring. In the ring, and they're replaced now. Something else entirely. So this ring is cool. You know, nice little donut. These controls here allow me to scale. Allow, allow me to do to scale, scale to scale to scale the tool. And also to and also too, this will also allow me to um do a lot of other things. I can also take this here, the coverage, and change. You know how f how far the um the um the, ri the ring goes. Now, of course, this will change based on your sub tool, but this is a great way to create like different primitives to your surface. So there's also a ring here. Logic change number spans on your tool on the tool. This right here, it's a twist. It's kind of cool, and also the th also is here change the number of edges. So this is right. This is the number of segments and spans. So the green the green level here is your spans. And you can have you have many as you want, though I don't think you need that many. So it's all good. I like I like this thing. Let's, let's do another one. And also too, while you're still while it's still active, you click on this customize. You could pick you could pick any more of these. Let's, let's go for a cube. Cubes are cool. So same thing as cube. You just pick. You just use use um, these handles to change the number of spans you want and edges. How cool is that? So let's go back to our ring. That was a cool, that's a cool thing to work with. So now we're gonna we're gonna go ahead now and do deformer on this ring. Okay. So the first one, and I will admit I have not I have not played with these tools yet because it's so much fun. This is what the bent arc. And without what that bent arc does, it'll basically it'll basically bend the tool. It'll bend the object to deform an arc. You know, like a like your like your imagine for your notebook. You, you imagine you you bend your notebook. Um, in either direction, you make, you make a little tunnel. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bend it this way. It's kind of cool. It's like looking at this like a you know like 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 a like a like a donut like a stretched donut or something. Okay, and even even fit the rate even fit the radius of the bend, and also the twist deformers. This will work in either direction. It'll either, either this allow you to bend your tool. In other all kinds of directions with this. I love the arc tool. 
and this is great for like you know this is great for trying to um conform an object to another object that let's say like a um a curved button or something like that you can use the deformers for this so and also too you can also hit reset or delete it so we can hit reset so enough for that next one the bend curve which is a, which is a pretty interesting tool if you if you if you pull this if you pull this it will it will deform the entire object and like the other ones you have you have, you have twist you know like a you know, like a one of those infinity signs or dna and it is a squeeze tool it's like a squeeze the model and you can also do scale effects with this this is another it's another great tool i love using personally it's like really it's a really beautiful tool and i can also go ahead and move this point away so let's say we do a little more of that i can do from here to there and move all these beautiful things this is great little tool there and this is smooth this is a smooth function which i have to use myself and basically it's um it also take the curve resolution and make and, and maintain make sure it make sure that the um the curve is actually very smooth so this is your x and y and your z this is absolutely beautiful i mean i love i love this tool and i can use a i can use a bend curve for any any direction all these all these little curves here affect some part of the model so let's turn this off now i might i'm going to do some more stuff with it the next one is this one should be known to all of us this is called the deformer very easy to make easy this is this is known as an ffd or a free form deformer and for those of you who've used um lightwave 3ds max maya and even the legendary soft homage this this is a welcome tool and what this does is this allows me to freely deform my object very easily you know you pull you pull, you pull control you pull control points you can you can deform you can deform your model in any way you want with this this is, this is great because in the past it was very difficult to to deform my objects and you probably notice as well that all the dots are, all the dots there are lit up well i don't want all those dots selected what if i want a few so to do this i can do i can do two things i can go ahead and put in symmetry on the z-axis on, on on x these little control these little these little these little arm um, cones here if you pull them they they, they they control things like um mirroring or parallels depending depending on how the axis you choose you probably notice now if i um look right look real look real quick look real quick right here near the um right over here this area right there you just notice how it never changed and it shows you the mold you're in these little these little squares these little um cones here control the resolution of the lattice deformer so i can basically pick as much as i want but realistically you ever doing the deforming of a simple object you only like one or two and right now i'm picking two right now so with this i can go ahead and pick this up i can move this around even symmetrically this is a great way to deform your objects most of together it's, a, it's absolutely great i am um, i haven't explored much of this yet because you know there's a lot more you want to learn how to do and I think I think of this. It'll it'll work on it'll work on mass objects, I believe. So if I do this and let it go. Okay, I don't think, I don't think it worked there, but um, yeah, yeah, I don't think I don't think I don't think, I don't think it worked in this in this favor yet. But if you want to affect one side of this, what you can do is hold the shift key and click the control points. And you turn them off. So this way, you don't you don't you you can control one corner. Of the model with this so i do this the rest of this unaffected well actually it's affected i don't know why it's working but it shouldn't it shouldn't be affected at all but you can just you can just pull the you can just pull the pins and some odd reason it still works i don't know why it's working but hopefully hopefully we'll i'll figure that out once i get to the um the, re the rest of the time process <laughs> great little tool it's a great little tool i love it all right it's good it's hit reset and next we'll go to extender and i saw this and i saw this in the um live stream on pixel logic it was really great but i want to go ahead and do a video myself and 
exp explore and talk to you guys about how I go about showing this stuff. So basically, this tender allows you to model become a primitive. Like you can model a tree or you model a, a minion as a base mesh. So what I'll do is, if I pull this here to the lever, well, this one here, if I pull this yellow lever up, and even even these ones here, these but before these control the resolution of your of your object, as as well as well as the resolution of the extender. If I pull this up on the y axis, this, this is what happens. This all these sliders here control the resolution of the extend of the extension. So I, I can try I can set it with like three or something really low, something really ridiculously low. And same thing here. I can pull this out. You know this. This reminds me of um, one of the one of those one of those um Dyson fan old fans I saw in um Best Buy like recently. It was like, kind of cool to see that. But yes, with the with the extender tools, I can control the resolution in any direction that I pull. If I if I pull it if I pull if I pull this way, I can do more, and I can, I can keep going. I can keep going indefinitely until until I feel that it's an it's it's um finished. So I can keep going like this, boom, 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 <laughs> and basically I can just you know pull off the extension a little bit. I can keep going until I until I feel, until I feel the need that there's no more to do. So let's go ahead and just pull that in there. You know, and, and of course it's a lot of work involved. It's, it's a new it's a new pro, it's a new experience, but I mean, I'm I'm enjoying I'm enjoying this process. So. So there's a lot to learn here. There's, there's a lot to learn in this new feature set. All right, let's go back and reset that. Yes, me and my me and my horrible deformer tools. So next one's flatten. If this one, I'm going to use a different tool for this one. Poly spare, probably, be probably best for this demonstration. And I'm gonna go I'm gonna go on my flatten. And flatten does exactly what it does. Very similar to the curve to the um, flatten brush to the flatten brush we're all used to. So here. Like, like the other ones, we can do symmetry. We can go ahead and we go ahead and flatten it, and there you go. It'll flatten. It'll flatten all the sides. All the all the sides here are flattened down, depending on what I've, what I've chosen for for for, symmet for symmetry. So I'm going to pull this out a little bit. I'm going to pull this out so that I can mirror on, on I can mirror this on all the sides. I mean, I kind of wish though there's a way to like um tell me um tell me what's um mirrored. What is it? What is it mirrored? So we'll pull this down some. There might be a, there might be a visual cue. I'm not exactly sure. Here we go. Now you pull this down here. There we go. So yeah, this is, so yeah, basically, of course, if you pull this higher, it'll tell you that's mirrored. So this right here is a flat, the flat new flattened brush, the flattened deformer. You know, I can also flatten my object. You know, nice little, a nice little, a nice cute, a nice cute little. What do you call that? Um, like a um. A garbage square, and the best part about this too with the deformers is I can mirror. I can do it all at once. I, I can do the sides all at one time with the deformers. So I can just pull this down like this, <laughs> and it's a very clever way to make a box or something like that. You know, like um, you know, like you know, like that um, I don't know, a cube of garbage. If I can if I can say that. It's kind of cool to see this flatten out like this, and I can and I can do, and I can do the same thing with this ring again. You know, I can do the ring, put it to flatten, and the cool thing about the deformers is it'll it'll adhere to the bounding box of your object, which is great. And of course, I said it's a quickie, so I don't take too long with this. So multi multi slice, I haven't tried that. I haven't tried this one yet. It's kind of a cool little, it's kind of a cool little um, little tool. Multi slice, it's basically cutting up your model in such a way that it'll it'll allow you to, it'll allow you to um. Cut your model up and everything. It's you know slice width and X Y Z. Nothing too fancy about this one. Hit reset, and we'll go ahead now and taper. If you if you've mirrored with like deformers and Max or Maya, this is this will be, this will be very native. And basically taper. It tells ZBrush to taper the um like imagine this box this bounding box being pulled inwards the top. That's taper. And and like I said, you, you can you, you can do this on all sides, every possible angle, whether it's positive and negative. 
and I think it will stick within the bounding box we have here and here as well exponent you can basically set the one or change the exponent so that it affects it differently and you know like a little like, like a little swollen embryo kind of deal going on here and last but not least we have the twist deformer and this is my favorite deformer so you just pull the amp you just pull the little handles and it'll twist very nicely you know it's, it's a good way it's a good way to um, make make um ropes in here now using zbrush um in the past you have to let you in the past you have to like um go on a 3d program and do this clone stuff twist it afterwards here it's easy right here so that's pretty much it for um for deformers and if i hit the little my little button here hit the if hit, hit gizmo 3d get back to the gizmo but let's turn this off now so i hope you guys learned a little something today about using the using the gizmo i mean if i'm going to be using this tool use zbrush 4 or 8 in the future i hope the gizmo stays as a default it's beautiful oh one thing I didn't show unfortunately because i don't because i don't know how to do it yet i found out that i can modify i can modify my gizmo i think it's let me see here this i wonder there's a feature for this uh let's see i mean i'm probably gonna find it after this video is over but pretty much the gizmo can be edited to anything you to anything any kind of shape you want so so eventually i'm going to figure out a way to get my own my own gizmo set up but um for, but for right now though well for, so for now i'm not focus on, i'm not going to focus on fixing that now i will do it another time once i figure out how to fix it so without further ado i want to thank you guys for watching my video this um this quickie if you have any questions of course feel free to put them down in the comment section below or to say hey um if you, if you cool if, you, if you're cool with the video give it a like if you think it sucks give it a thumbs down and of course subscribe i always have some really cool stuff brewing in my head and i'm looking forward to doing some more cool stuff for you guys in the future as well and also you can find me on instagram on twitter and on my on my official facebook page care graphics cg so without further ado guys this is Kashif here saying good night have a wonderful evening and god bless see you next time